Hello and welcome to What The Hey, where I'm your regular host of What The Hey, and today on What The Hey, I'm once again reacting to yet another requested video. Today's video request comes from Game Master 24681012, so hello to you and thank you very much for requesting today's video. The video in question that I'm checking out today is titled, What Happened to Crow64, which was uploaded on October 15th of 2020. The video duration is 13 minutes and 22 seconds, and the video description gives credit to the music used as well as the people who helped create the video. The video itself was uploaded by Adam Butcher, so hello to you and thank you very much for creating and releasing your work. Like with all of my reaction videos, if there's something in this particular video that I feel may disturb someone to some degree, I'll be sure to mention that in the video description, so feel free to check that out if you feel like there's something you may not be comfortable with. So with all of that out of the way, let's actually watch the video itself. So this package arrived today, Yay. and it contains a game, one that I think basically no one has ever played. So pet But before we try it out, I need to tell you the weird tale that's behind it. Undertale! Ooh. But just how easy is it to play Nintendo 64? Are the controller all... looks like it could be used on some kind of Yahoo. military jet. Just a few years ago, this was state of the art, flat it, and it two dimensional. Is. Pretty much. Now Mario lives in a 3D world. Mario? And you can make him go wherever you want. Epic. Uh, the N64 era, mm -hmm. an innocent time. The 3D platformer was king, and out yes. of the dozens of so-called Mario clones, Mario. my three favorites still hold up. BFD. But what if I told you there was one more Who's forgotten that? game on that list? Nice. A game that never had a chance to enter our childhoods. Maybe because it was that bad. Fell into more than just development hell, and a game that cost its troubled creator everything. Okay. The game I'm talking about is Catastrophe Crow. Oh, no, I like that name. I hadn't heard of it either. I that like is, the font. until I was flipping through some of my old N64 magazines. Catastrophe Crow was the highly anticipated project from Manfred Lorenz, Manfred. a veteran like German name. game designer, avid sailor, notorious perfectionist, Whoa. and founder of Opus Interactive. Magnum Opus. Announcing the game at Space World 97, the team promised fearless exploration of unfamiliar that worlds. That looks like Pet Scott graphics. groundbreaking called an eternal revival system. Re oh. just bad <laughs> that sounds like a religious thing. With the eponymous crow based on his daughter's own design, Lorenz was considered eccentric for taking his kid-friendly games so seriously. Oh, in one of his good. few interviews, he claimed that Catastrophe Crow was beyond a game, and the that it real would push life. the boundaries of player experience. Ah, uh, okay. Like the metaphor this may just metaverse. Be hype, a more European version of John Romero is about to make you his uh -huh. But I do think Lorenz was onto something. As the game's Christmas 99 release drew near, journalists got their hands on a playable version. One reviewer said it was bigger than Banjo. Another said, hmm. move over Mario 64. Move on. I mean, even from a jaded gamer point of view, of somebody who's seen thousands of games, they've Ooh. done things that I've sat up and said, wow, this is pretty neat stuff. Huge, it's huge. But then something went wrong. The release date got pushed back a few months, then a few months again. I was, oh wait, I wasn't born yet. Worryingly vague, I wasn't born yet. Rumors began to circulate that, that something had happened. Someone got to sucked designer. into the void. Manfred Lorenz was seemingly taking more and more control, with programmers left in the dark, and artists making hundreds of strange assets without knowing what they were for. Is it a Soon, cult? A series of forum posts appear from disgruntled anonymous staff. One suggested that Lorenz's home life had completely broken down, Great. saying that he hadn't seen his family in months. Ah, while a that's tester claimed healthy. that he had found something in the game that he created. That Manfred had unintentionally created. Oh, he created in a it. Post okay. from February 2001, over a year beyond their original release date, one staff member said he approached Manfred directly, pleading with him to think of the player and let them release the game. To which Manfred replied, "No, the player is gone." Man, that's By very now, culty. Opus Interactive had spent nearly ten million dollars on oh the project. Oh my gosh! Could no longer pay their staff. The equivalent, or Lorenz just straight had up. Everyone dismissed and barred himself inside the offices. There he stayed, we imagine, still working on the game. Dude was on something. That's then, uh, at the end of two thousand and one. He released it? Question mark. Oh. Oh wait. The N sixty four era finished, mm -hmm. and the debt collectors came calling. Oh when no. They arrived at Opus, Manfred, for probably the first time in years, wasn't there. Was not there. Uh huh. All the development hardware and backups was gone. disappeared. Manfred wasn't at home either, and they learned that his wife had left the country over six months ago. The only clue left 
was that his car and the sailing boat normally hitched to it. Poor guy. Oh, okay. He just left. He said no. Two days later, and Manfred's boat was found floating a few miles off the coast of Cuxhaven. Oh, no. There was no sign of him or the stolen equipment. Only a neat pile of clothes and a note. Addressed to his wife, the note makes no mention of the game uh -huh. or his debts. Well, it's got a little bird only thing. that he had finally gone home. He probably died. Oh. Catastrophe Crow disappeared with him. Uh huh. No one would ever play it. After five years of development, what the game really was and what had obsessed its creator so relentlessly would remain a mystery lost. To no the one depths. had a backup of it? Okay. Or so I thought. Oh. Because since I first began this video, I've been checking eBay every day for any sign I like of the, the game. Music. Let's go. And two weeks ago, I found this. What appears to be a genuine development card from Opus Interactive. Oh. The seller said he'd found it in his attic, but didn't seem to really know what he had. So I bought it. For eleven dollars. What might be the only surviving copy of Catastrophe Crow. And we're gonna play it. Um I believe it should work fine on my PAL N64, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't we'll we'll try something else, but for now, I just thought we'd do a playthrough. Looks a little sketch. Okay. Looks a little sketch, not gonna lie. Ah, uh, so cool. I don't have a Nintendo 64 on me, but I like playing them. They're fun. This looks sketch. This is like Pet Scout. Wow. Uh, let's see. That's fun. Hmm. This actually seems to be working. Uh, mm hmm I can jump. Uh, huh. Yeah, it's got the, the cool triple jump. Look, it seems like it has similar right, mechanics um, to Banjo. A to little you. bit. Is this a representation? Is this like a creepy pasta? I'm starting to get creepy pasta vibes from this. Dude found a haunted a cartridge. Kind of controls. Well, yeah, Nintendo. Big computer, yes. This is very banjo-y. Uh, not very good at talking while playing, so. No, I'll, I'll put a video in afterwards. Just some big blocks. Random stars. Yes. You can like wall jump maybe. Yes. I like the noises of old and Nintendo 64 games are so fun. Is it getting white? He's going to the void. Is that the dude? Yeah. No. This is very creepy pasta y. This is gonna have like red eyes. No. Roy! Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Dude was not shocked at all. It just happens, yeah. I like the levels. They look not. Is that? Early T posing? Yes. Yes. I just. I'm going to work. That's, <laughs> that's what that look. There's something in the window. Is this just a representation of what actually happened because no one's there anymore? Stocks be going wee. That's tough. Is it gonna spaz out? Oh, it's a phone. Yellow. Why is one arm like white or wing? I love the noises. Hello. Big office chair, yes. Oh boy. Boing. 
Can you answer it? Just gonna awkwardly keep going. Was there a picture frame with the house of Manfred's house or whatever? Mm. This is very creepy pasta ish. Look at those stocks, bruh. It's G mod. They turned into one of the cabinets. Just like poke it and it'll move. Oh, what is this like? This is like the recent, um. It's not a creepy pasta, but it's like you get lost in the halls and it's like not reality. Oh gosh. I can't remember what it's called. It's gonna come to me in a second, but. Hello, boat. Is that a boat? Yes. Oh, it's like the dude's boat. Oh. You know, that's how that works. Ba da ba ba ba. In the void. Fantastic. Slenderman now for some reason. Hello. I like how the border of the TV is kind of there the whole time. It kind of makes you feel like you're actually watching gameplay. That's very fun. The stairs. Why not? You know, that is okay. Cry about it. Do it. Is that a chicken? Can you just go into it? Hello, it's death calling. You're supposed to be there. That's my favorite EDM music. Oh gosh. The weird T-posing thing. Is that the great glob go lob glob? However you say it. I don't know. Getting groovy with it. Well. That's the dude's house, right? We got tinnitus now for some reason. Can you not go? That looks like a Minecraft door. Is he crying? I can't tell. <laughs> this is awkward. Is this supposed to be like the kid's room? This is now an ASMR. <laughs> Hello, who's gonna be there? Hello? Supp supposed to be kind of like a bird? Water, for some reason. Well, that thing's dead. Probably. Okay. Yeah, that's completely normal. Hello? Okay! So overall, general analysis, that was a very well done video. Additionally, that was my first ever Adam Butcher video, so that was really cool to see kind of what their content is like. I'm still super on the edge of whether or not I believe that's an actual, like, video game that was actually created. Which, I mean, clearly there was footage or whatever and there's, like, information on it, but with, like, how the rest of the video was done, it was convincing enough to where I still feel like that could be an actual thing, according to all the lore that was presented, but I still don't know. 
the script itself is what makes me feel like it could possibly not be a legit game because it's like the way everything was spoken even though uh, the person playing the game was saying that they would put like a voiceover over the like footage that they had of the game the way it was formatted and everything seemed very as i was saying a lot in the video like a creepy pasta the graphics and a lot of the movements throughout the like game footage also heavily resembled other video games and i'm not sure how easy it is to make a game similar to mario 64 like you just create other assets and you create new characters but you add in movements that were already created and stuff so i have no idea how legit any of that was which means that Adam Butcher just did a genuinely great job at like presenting the story around Crow 64. It's very unfortunate to hear the backstory of the creator, but I definitely feel like including all of that, even the stuff that's very upsetting, helps sets the mood for the rest of the video. If what happened to the creator is legit, as well as the game footage that was shown, I feel like all the spooky stuff that was included was pretty much a cry for help because I don't think anyone would see that and not question if the person creating the game is okay, which apparently all the people who worked for him were concerned. But clearly all those hours at the office created like whatever that was. And I think the combination of the inspiration of a child's, like, drawing, but also the, like, weird T-posing alien things adds to the result of just something that seems extremely weird and extremely chaotic. And once again, the script and the way that all the words were spoken throughout the video helped to add with the atmosphere of like uncertainty and like uneasiness because it's like when you hear about a creator who basically went missing and is like presumed to be dead, you don't feel exactly like great about that. I feel like another one of the things that makes me kind of question the legitimacy of the game itself was the cartridge in that whole section about someone just randomly finding it and then the way it looked with like the sticker kind of ripped off and like the crudely drawn words of Crow, that kind of seemed questionable to me but like if that's how it was that's pretty cool. But overall, 10 out of 10, I think that's great. Whether or not all of that's legitimate, or at least the story behind it is, and then the gameplay was just kind of created based off of the story, I think all of it was really well done. So that's essentially the reaction video, so if there's anything that you would like for me to check out, let me know and I'll get to watching it as soon as I can, so thank you very much for watching. Bye!